Welcome to the Half Done Hobbyist. My name's Simon and I'm very happy you've joined me today. I'm going to be painting the Hulk from Marvel Crisis Protocol. First of all, I primed the model with Mechanicus Standard Grey spray from the GW. I knew the green and purple would cover this well and it would also provide a bit of depth. Grey and black are also a lot more forgiving of mistakes and gaps than a stark white undercoat is. Uh, I started off by base coating the shorts with Xerius purple. All the paints are going to be from GW for this by the way. Um, Xerius purple is a very strong colour. I still applied two coats for a good solid block of colour. You should make sure you cover 100% of the area, including under the hem of the shorts trying to be careful not to get too much purple onto the skin area because it can be quite difficult to fix. A little bit doesn't matter though. So there are lots of great box games out there but they have one major problem. The minis never get painted. That's kind of why I'm called the half done hobbyist because I've got lots of models and I've, I paint a few from a box and then don't paint the rest of them and it looks rubbish when you're playing a game. So, unless you're us uh, unusually diligent, then I think everyone will have the same kind of experience. This is the issue I'm having with Marvel Crisis Protocol just now. Um, I'm trying to rectify it. I'm not trying that hard because, as well as the base game, I've also bought Venom, Rocket and Groot, and, of course, the Hulk, just to add to my woes. Since we're all in lockdown just now, I've made it my mission to actually fully paint a, a set of minis for the game. So the focus here is on getting things tabletop ready as quickly as possible. In my opinion, tabletop ready means that the minis look good from a distance of about two feet maybe. It may not stand up to scrutiny when held up close to the eyes, but then we're not going for golden demon quality here. What we're doing now is blocking in the skin colour with warpstone glow. Uh, just painting that across the whole skin. It's a really nice colour for the Hulk. Um, it, it looks like the, the colour the Hulk was in my childhood. He's a bit lighter now in the Avengers films, but uh, this, it, this takes me back a bit. I love all of the tutorials on YouTube by the likes of Squidmar Miniatures, Miniac and Kujo. They're all brilliant painters. But the reality is, most of us, because we've all got busy lives, won't be able to achieve that quality through either a lack of time, patience, or maybe even ability. It's nothing to be ashamed of. These guys are pretty exceptional at their craft, so don't beat yourself up if you can't get there. That being said, for each miniature you paint, the better you'll get, even if it's just neatness or placement of highlights or colour theory. So just popping back to the video here, um, I'm painting in the hair Abaddon Black. Just putting a nice solid colour on it, same as the others. A wee bit of water mixed in. I'm using a wet palette but you don't need to, you just need to make sure your paints are... Um, I've, I've got a wee dab of water in there just to make them flow a wee bit better into all the nooks and crannies in the hair. Just taking my time not to get any in the skin because that would be quite hard to rectify as well. One thing I've learned in all my years of miniature painting is you won't paint anything just by thinking about it. This might sound obvious to everyone but I've spent a lot of time imagining what a project will look like without ever actually starting it. I'd have been much better getting off my bum, priming, and then starting to put paint on the model and seeing where it took me. On the model just now, I am just adding a bit of depth to it with Beal Tan Green, just sketching in the shadows. Doesn't have to be particularly neat. The layering stage will cover up a lot of this stuff, so just make sure you get it a nice amount in between the abs in the belly button under the pecs and um, just to, in the, the neck crease and between the muscles just to define everything a bit better I mean this, this model's a gorgeous sculpt 
Although I was surprised that there were loads of gaps left after building. Maybe that was just me. If I was to do this project again, I'd spend much more time on filling the gaps and making sure everything was nice and smooth before priming, as there are a few rough spots caused by my uh, filling in. I used Vallejo plastic putty, which normally does a great job of filling, but this time I didn't clean up well enough afterwards. I'm just going to slap the wash, the Biltan Green, onto his face and his hands. Just make sure on the face you get it well in his eye sockets and in his mouth. Uh, it's very important to define the face properly, so you can just do an all over wash because we're going to be over painting absolutely everything on there. There wasn't much to do on the legs, there's not that much definition, maybe in the back of the calves so and between the toes, but that's all you can really do there. Here's a wee wash for the shorts, a, a druchy violet wash. Uh, it's quite a strong wash, so just slap it on there, let it dry. It'll dry almost black, but we'll sort that out with a wee highlight later on. So the next stage on the Hulk skin is to mix Warpstone Glow and Moot Green and make sure it's very, very thin, almost water, on your palette. Um, and then what I did was I dragged the, the brush in the direction that the muscles go. If you imagine muscles as bundles of fibres and they pull to contract and they release to, to extend. Um, with this I just tried to make sure that the paint was always flowing in the direction of the muscle fibres. Uh, so it'll be different for the chest, for the abs, uh, for the shoulder muscles and the biceps and everything. So if you just think about it like that, maybe have a wee look at anatomy or Mr. Universe or something like that, just so you can see under the skin how the muscles are constructed. I'm just adding this mix as a wee um, first layer to the face. Just being very careful just to feather it in just on the raised areas. It doesn't look like it's doing much but once it dries it will dry a wee bit lighter so um, you'll have your highlight there. On the peck I'm doing, I've added a wee bit more moot green to the mix and I'm just adding where I think the, the top highlights will be, where the shiny bits of his, his chest will be. So it might look a bit stark just now, but I'm going to um, layer it down, like water it down and blend it a tiny wee bit, just with the previous mix. All I'll do is go over that with um, a wee bit less moot green in it, and it'll blend into the rest of the chest. And just continue this over the whole model, avoiding the deepest recesses because the Beel Tan Green's in there um, and it'll create really good depth and definition on his muscles. There's a lot to do, just try to be patient and use your best judgement. And if something doesn't work out, you can always redo it, so don't panic about doing anything wrong. Sometimes I go back to models months after I, fi I think I've finished them and redo bits that I'm, I'm not happy with. But as you can see, he's coming along quite nicely. Everything's beginning to pop a wee bit. I didn't take these highlights too far. I wanted quite a realistic look, so there's no ultra line highlighting or anything on this model. This is just me sketching the shoulders. As you'll see, I'm going in the direction of the muscle fibres again. So 
So sketching in the tricep here. Uh, there's a lot to do. The muscles are all different shapes, so just use your best judgement to see where you think the light would be hitting them. Throughout this process I experimented with a lighter mix and sometimes a darker mix. And like I say, I just used my best judgement to try to make it look good. There's no hard or fast rules about where the highlights should go. You just have to be very patient and make sure that you don't rush anything here. This is a wee technique I, pick, I picked up where you can just do little lines and it, when it dries it looks really a really nice shiny effect on the corners of things. So you can maybe try that. Just sketching in these highlights. Like I say, there's nothing difficult about this. Anyone could do it. That's kind of the purpose of my videos. It's just about getting paint on the models. It's not about winning competitions. I think a lot of people have got fear about doing any of this kind of stuff. Um, but you'll get nowhere if you ha have that kind of attitude. So you just need to get going. What's the worst that could happen? best that could happen is you'd have a brilliantly painted miniature at the end of it. This is a lighter mix on the Hulk's face, just kind of going over this, the same areas as before but leaving a bit of the previous coat showing through. Painting his frown lines in as light as I can get away with. I'll be painting his eyebrows after this as well. Um, it's quite an important part of the Hulk's face. Here's the bit no one likes, painting eyes. All I did was really take my time here and just laid the brush into the eye socket and let the paint do the rest. I didn't make the paint too thin because I didn't want it to run anywhere. So a slightly thicker consistency than usual and just dabbed it in as, as best I could. There you go. Look quite good. And then while well, I've still got the white scar out, I sketched in his teeth. So the reason we put the Beale Tan in his mouth earlier was to um, make sure that between the teeth was all shaded and I wanted a green shade for this, not a black or anything like that so as long as you pick out the teeth as well as you can this bit will look really cool Just take your time don't, don't use paint that's too thin because if it runs between the teeth it'll be quite difficult to fix. You'd probably have to go back to... You'd probably have to paint over with Warpstone Glow and then Beale Tan because if you just tried to paint Beale Tan into the recesses then over the white paint it would be a bit lighter than you wanted. So you'd have to go back a few steps to rectify your, your error. But be brave. Just take your time and dab it on there. Uh, same technique for the pupils, just take your time. If, if you get it where you want it, don't be too keen to go back and fix it uh, or add more to it because the likelihood is you'll ruin it. I've done that on a few models and I didn't want to do it on this one, so as soon as I was happy with it, that was it. Took the brush away, didn't try to be a hero. And like I say, sketching in his eyebrows with Abaddon Black as well. I did actually wonder what was wrong with his face because it didn't look mean enough and then I realised I'd forgotten his eyebrows. 
so I did go back and do this stage after I'd uh, done the base and everything else. But there we go. Nice thin paint, just sketch them in. Looks good. I uh, got the Beal Tan green out again and uh, went over the toenails and the fingernails. I just thought they should be darker than the rest of the skin, so I put a few layers of Beal Tan green on there. And then highlighted the hair first with Dawnstone and then with Administratum Grey, just on the tips. Um, I always find highlighting black quite challenging, so this is the way I'd decided on, just decided to go for it. It looks okay, it's probably an area that could be improved in the future. Now I really enjoyed painting this base, uh, I think it came out really nicely. So I'm just slapping on the Dawnstone um, all over the base, getting it into all the nooks and crannies. I'm leaving these um, these lines unpainted, I'm not putting Dawnstone on them. And you'll see why in a wee minute. So I didn't know how this would go. Um, I really wanted to do Dawnstone and then a, a, a black wash, but I didn't know how it would come out. But I gave it a try and it was actually amazing. I, I loved the effect it gave. It just looks like pavement, so you can't really ask for, for more than that. Like I say, two relatively thin coats on this. Um, first one will look a bit wishy-washy, but don't worry about that. You can just um, go over it again with another one and it'll, the second one should make it strong and uniform. I do love these bases. They're full of character and um, you can add a, another wee accent colour to make them pop, as you'll see in a wee minute. I'm not an expert on New York roads or their road markings, so I just did what I wanted. I don't really care if it's not right, as long as it looks good. So for this, which I think is probably a tram track or something like that, I uh, put Avaland Sunset on it. Just was as careful as possible, and just sketched it in. I say sketched it in quite a lot, I realise, but I can't think of any other way to describe what I'm doing. Um, I'm just being as careful as possible, staying between the lines and making the coat as uh, uniform as, as I can. So, I had a little problem with the wash, with the null oil wash after this stage. Um, my three-year-old son decided that he wanted to see what I was doing when I was in the middle of painting it. So I didn't actually get it on camera. It was all off to the side. So um, I've only got the end of that stage. But all you do is slap the, the black wash onto all the grey areas and um, the metallic manhole cover as well, which you'll see in a minute. You let it dry thoroughly and it will seep into all the recesses. There's a lot more little dents and um, like tiny little holes on this and cracks and things than you realise. When you put the wash on you'll be quite surprised what it actually seeps into. So the manhole was just lead belcher, just all over the top of it. Careful as possible. Cover it all lead belcher and that's you done. So let all that dry and then slap the wash onto it. As you can see this is a bit I missed out because of my son. Wouldn't change it for the world though. So after that wash is dried completely and it needs to be completely, it can't be tacky or anything like that because it'll lift up when you dry brush. Um, you get Dawnstone, which was the base layer, put a little bit on your brush and wipe it off on the tissue. You don't want to be seeing any paint really when you scrub the uh, scrub the brush on the tissue. Now just scrub this across the base and 
the raised areas in the base will pick up any paint that's left in the bristles and it gives a, a nice effect. This is another stage I was surprised that, that it worked so well. All painting really is, is learning these small techniques and just applying them to different parts of the miniature as and when need, they're needed. If you know how to do dry brushing, you can do the base. If you know how to do layering, you can do nice highlights. If you want to learn glazing, all that is is a thin layer, so you just need to thin your paints a wee bit more and be a bit more careful. So even on the flat surface, this um, Dawnstone dry brush is picking up really well. It's edging, edge highlighting all the little holes and everything like that, and all the cracks, so it's, it's looking really good. Also you'll notice it leaves kind of a, a non-uniform colour across the top of the surface, so bits look brighter than other bits. Um, that's the effect we want. If you go and look at the pavement, no two bits are the same colour. So all we do is get Administratum Grey after that and do exactly the same thing. You don't even have to really, uh, lower the pressure, you just have to scrub it and it'll pick up different areas to what the Dawnstone picked up. To finish it all off, we're doing the rim in Abaddon Black. Take your time, be careful, and you'll end up with a really nicely painted miniature at the end of it. If you liked this video, subscribe below and leave a comment and I will get back to you. Thanks for watching, very much appreciated. We'll see you in the next one.